also YouTube, NCG here, bringing you a deck ready for link format. So one of the very few decks that we can build full powered now today um, is Dark Lords. Now, they took a bit of a backseat um, in this upcoming map purely because they weren't as consistent as they are and they still need that extra edge. However, coming into link format when you don't have to rely on the extra deck, decks like this, Monarchs, Dracos, are really going to have that up hand advantage because you can still play them the way you usually do and not have to worry too much about the link mechanic itself. So without further ado, we're going to crack straight into this um, and we can show you kind of what Dark Lords do, how they do it and you know why this is kind of set for link format even though you can see there's an extra deck there. Okay, so we start off with Triple Dark Lord Ixchill. Now, um, you should all know what this card does by now. You basically uh, pitch this card on one other Dark Lord card and draw two cards. Um, and then all Dark Lords, pretty much all the new Dark Lords, um, share the same effect that you pay a thousand life points to target one Dark Lord Spell Attract card in your graveyard. You apply the target's effect, then shuffle that target into the deck. Um, so with that kind of effect, you don't have to pay the costs on the spells and traps, you're paying a thousand life points instead. Triple Dark Lord Superbia. Um, now the downside of this is because it's got old card text, and it says when this card is special summoned from the graveyard. Sometimes it misses timing by reviving other Dark Lords. But if you do it right, you can get double Dark Lords on board. Which then helps push you for link tokens. Or helps you go into that one XYZ that you may need. Um, so the idea is you usually pitch this with Ixchill. Or you've got this as a trading target. Triple um, Dark Lord Nas 10. Uh, you discard two other cards. Two other Dark Lord cards special summon this card from your hand. Um, and then during the player's turn again, you pay a thousand life points and apply a spell, Dark Lord spell or trap card effect, and then shuffle it back in. Double Dark Lord Zorato. Now some people are playing this at free. That's completely fine. Um, again, it is a trading target, which works really, really well. Um, its first effect of if you have four or more Dark Monsters with different names in the graveyard, you tribute some in this card by tributing um, one Dark Monster. Um, it happens, it's just not its main effect, like you're more likely going to be sending one dark monster from your hand to the graveyard, destroy all monsters your opponent controls, um, and then during the end phase, if this effect was activated, you destroy this card. So 9 times out of 10, you're getting this guy on the field, nuking your opponent's board, then overlaying. Double Dark Lord uh, Ukabak. Um, if this guy is normal summoned or special summoned, you can send one Dark Lord card from your deck to the graveyard. He's kind of your only normal summon card. Or normal summon without tribute kind of card. Um, and it just helps fill up your grave for plays with the other Dark Lords. Um, and then we play Double Vanity's Fiend. Um, purely because with links you kind of want to, if you're not going to rely on getting a mutual link or anything like that. Um, Vanity's Fiend can be very very helpful because you do have the ability to special summon some of these back from grave. Uh, and then tribute them off and go into Vanity's Fiend. Um, Obviously, when we had the Terra Top engine, this was more consistent, um, and you also had the uh, the ability to do Christia and to also do stuff like um, Vanity's Ruler and Vanity's Emptiness. Uh, not the trap card, sorry. The yeah, Vanity's Ruler. I swear it was Vanity Ruler. Going to soon, so I'll have a quick look. Because I I personally always thought that Vanity's Ruler was the better one. Um, yeah, Vanity's Ruler. Um, I always preferred this over Ixchill purely because um, you could still special summon and your opponent couldn't. Um, and then uh, what I didn't like about Christian was putting it back to the top of the deck. Anyway, uh, we wrap it up with one Dark Lord and this. You discard this card and one Dark Lord card and then target one Dark Lord card in your grave and add it back to your hand. Uh, and then I like playing one Dark Lord Morningstar purely because he's like, I love the artwork. The artworks on Dark Lords are incredibly good. Um, so you cannot be special summoned. If this card is tribute summoned, you special summon Dark Lord monsters from your hand and or deck up to the number of effect monsters your opponent controls. While you control another Dark Lord monster, your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. Once per turn, you can send cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard equal to the number of Dark Lord monsters on the field. And if you do, gain 500 life points for each Dark Lord card sent to the graveyard by this effect. So it works really, really well. Um, you know, you don't have to play this. You can take this out whatever you like. I personally like it. It can help, like, consist, uh, help to the brick but um, sometimes it can also win you games. Uh, so that's it for the monsters in the Dark Lord deck. Again, um, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a nice deck that you could, if you've already got, don't get rid of it because it could be good in Link. Triple Dark Lord Contact. Uh, this is your monster reborn of the card, especially on one Dark Lord monster from your deck, uh, sorry, from your graveyard in defense position. You can only activate one per turn. Um, now, 
when it says you can only activate once per turn, when you bounce it back, you're technically not activating it, so you can get away with playing this twice. Triple Banishment of the Dark Lords. Um, add one Dark Lord card from your deck to your hand, except Banishment, um, and you can only activate once per turn. So nine times out of ten, if you open up with Ixchill or um, Superbia, you activate this, add it, um, pitch Ixchill, draw two. Then you can, if you get a Dark Lord on board, you can shuffle this back, get your Banishment out. You know, the, the plays are endless. Uh, triple trading because you've got so many targets. You can main Kaijus in this, so I do recommend that. Um, there are a couple of cards you can take out. If you wanted to, you can take out your Vanity Fiends. You can drop your Uko backs down. Um, just so you, you can even take out Morning Star. You only really want two spaces. You can take out one Morning Star and a Vanities or an Uko Buck, whatever prefers like suits you best. Because then you have more targets for trading. Plus, you know, maining Kaijus in the game is always gonna be uh, give you a heads up and an advantage. Triple Lore of Darkness, you're all dark monsters, and you know, some of them you don't mind getting banished and using them as the fodder. Triple Pot of Duality, now, me personally, I'm not 100% set on the third. If I was going to put in my Kaijus, I'd probably take out one pot and Morning Star to get my double Kaijus, um, purely because I think three is always too much, because nine times out of ten, if you play three, you're going to draw into the second one from it. That's just kind of how Sod's Law works, but it's important in this deck to keep the consistency growing. As you can see, we've got uh, nine oh, nine draw cards there, not including X Chill, which also counts as another draw card. Uh, and then you've got three searches. You know you've got the ability to keep your deck unbrickable, um, but you know it does happen. One Dark Hole, one Regeki, and then the card that probably going to be insane in link format is Soul Charge, purely because you bring everything back to the main monster zone, and then you can push forward further forward with your link monsters. Uh, then we play a small trap lineup. Now, the track lineup is very straightforward and simple, um, but it also contains two fun cards, which is two full force virus. I like playing this card, it's a bit of fun. Um, majority of your Dark Lords, all the target, so your X Shield's got the target, um, where are they? Serato's the target, your Nasten's a target, your Superbia's a target, your Undis is a target, and even your Morningstar's a target for your full force virus. Um, and this can certainly shut down zoos, it can also shut down any type of other deck that rely on lower defense but higher attack. Uh, Double Dark Lord Rebellion, now the artwork on this is just absolutely stunning, so, so good, um, and the effect is really good as well. You see, send one Dark Lord monster from your hand or face up from your field to the graveyard, destroy one card on the field, only you know, only activate once per turn. So again, you can bounce this back, and when you bounce back, you don't pay the cost of sending one Dark Lord monster from your hand, you pay a thousand life points instead. So this makes it incredibly useful. And then I, const I like keeping one Dark Lord enchantment purely because... Um, you send one Dark Lord monster from your hand or face up from your side of the field to the graveyard to take control of one face up monster your opponent controls. So you don't target or anything like that, but you take control of it without targeting. Um, and then you can use this twice. If you've got a Dark Lord on board, use Dark Lord, uh, use this, take control of one of your opponent's monsters, send this back to deck, take control of another one, tribute them off the link cards if you want to, overlay them, whatever you want to do. Uh, now on to the extra deck. Now this doesn't have link monsters in it, but this is basically how you can play the deck right now today and carry it through to the link format. So, we play um, the Spiders, so number 77, number 84, and number 35. Now, obviously, you go into 35, and then you can go on top of 84 and 77. Now, the reason these are really good is because your life points are always going to be different from your opponents because you're going to be bouncing back monsters, um, and well, bouncing back spells and traps from your graveyard. One Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Gristle Map, maybe because of them times where you can't quite get game, but this 2k will do it for you. Uh, number 81 Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Super Dora, it is a pain in the ass. it's got a massive booty of 4k and 32 attack, so it works out massively, massively well. Uh, you play the small Galaxy Engine, so Galaxy Eyes Cyber Dragon, Galaxy Eyes Full Armor, uh, and number 95 Galaxy Eyes Dark Matter Dragons. Now, obviously, Matter Dragon sending cards to the graveyard helps push the play and the way Dark Lords work. Um, but you can also play number 62 if you want in this as well. We then play number 38, uh, Hope Harbinger, uh, Dragon Titanic Galaxy. Now, obviously, this is one of the best rank 8s around. Um, we play number 22, Zombie Stein. Because you are Dark Monsters, you get a 45k boot BE on the board. You're going happy days. Uh, Alzi, the Sylvian High Protector, because it's quite nice to loop your opponent sometimes, especially if it's a later game and they're a top decking. One Divine Dragonite Lord Felgrand, again to keep protection, you get this and Dora on board, you know, you're protecting yourself multiple times. Uh, and in the rank 7 we play number 11 Big Eye, Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon for the burn. Um, so it's very straightforward on that one. 
And then, of course, to round it up, probably the biggest rank seven in the game come link format will be Mecha Fan and Beast Draco Sap, purely because it can produce two tokens. So because it can produce those two tokens, you then have more fodder to go into link format and link monsters. Now, obviously, if you wanted to put link cards in here to kind of extend your plays, which you, it's very rare that you'll end up with more than one XZs on board when you're playing the Dark Lords, but sometimes it does happen. It does give you the ability to do so. Um, that's where you'll require link plays, um, and then you could take out stuff like Red Eyes Flare if you wanted to, um, or you could start knocking down some of the spider engines. You can probably take one of the spiders out. It really depends on how you want to play from there on. Anyway... Uh, that is it for the deck profile. Very straightforward, very, very simple. Um, and in, all the cards are available now, and you, you could take this deck through to link format. I'm not saying it's going to be the best in link format, but it certainly can put up a fight. Uh, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. And until next time, guys, see ya.